I saw in that presentation was just a slice of life story that led to a point. And I find that most good speaking really follows that basic formula. Your child says something unexpected, it catches you off guard and it makes you think. Or you have that little moment where you go, isn't it funny when? And those little moments, when we start to follow them, record them and turn them into stories, I find they work incredibly well. I believe in what I call out-reading your competition. I believe in reading and I always have, and it's something that means a great deal to me. If you don't have a love of opening books, you don't have the time to do it. For heaven's sake, please download the Audible audiobook app. You can listen to audiobooks anywhere you go. When I'm at gym, I listen to audiobooks. When I'm on the treadmill, if I'm in the bar, uninteresting lovemaking sessions, whatever the things like that. <laughs> I am perpetually taking in ideas. Now, of course, the ideas are going to be different depending on whether you're going the professional speaking route or going the contest speaking route. If you're going the professional speaking route and you want to deliver presentations for corporate audiences, you need to listen to all the latest corporate books. What are what, are, what is Simon Sinek saying? What are people like Seth Godin saying? What are, what's in the latest books? And they're all fascinating. And simply by listening to them, you also get a feel for what the business world is thinking about and which stories and ideas are being weighed up. And you start to speak that language. But there are different books that are useful to you for as a contest speaker. And I'll give you one. You only need to read the first 50 pages of this one, then you can drop the rest. It's by a cognitive psychologist, that's our big term for the evening, by the name of Steven Pinker. And this is a guy who studies how the brain works when it comes to language and communicating ideas. He has a book called The Sense of Style. In other words, how does style work? And he goes through a great amount of research that comes to a wonderfully simple conclusion. The conclusion is this, the best writing, the best speaking, causes people to see moving imagery in the mind. That's it. If you can get people to see a little picture story about your idea, you've made it come alive. So for instance, a presentation like the excellent one we just heard on nutrition, to go even further than that, you say, picture this, you wake up in the morning, your first thought is to, and you tell a story about the person going through their nutritional needs, their scenario. And what that does is it takes it out of the abstract where you say, we should all, and makes it imagine yourself in this situation. It becomes more intimate and it makes you see moving pictures in your mind. So we take notes on our phones if we think of a little speech idea, a little story idea, a little slice of life things, and we record them. When we have principles that are interesting, we try and make them come alive with stories. Now, the great thing about these stories, they do not have to be enormous. There's a past winner of the World Championships for Public Speaking named David Brooks. Brooks David Brooks comes from Texas, and he was invited one year to go and speak for Volvo in Sweden. They flew him first class halfway around the world, put him up in a five-star hotel, and he made some business point, but he wrapped it up in a story about his kid. And the story went like this, he said, when my son was learning how to play computer games, computers were brand new, he had an old Commodore. And to start the game, he had to type in his name, which was Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, enter. And he taught his little kid how to find the keys, how to hunt and peck, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, enter. And eventually, he pulled back out of the scenario and said, can you type your name? And his kid looked at it and he went, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, enter. So one day they're walking through a mall together. And he says, quick, Matthew, how do you spell your name? And this kid goes, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, enter. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a wonderful little story. It's the kind of thing that makes people laugh, but it's also the kind of thing that can be used to communicate a message about communication, or about learning by rote, rather than learning meaning, or whatever you want. So they don't have to be magnificent stories. You don't have to have climbed a mountain or fought with a shark or fought off a team of cheerleaders or anything as interesting as that. It's the slice of life stuff that makes ideas come alive. That's where we go shopping for our best features and our best communication.